Welcome to day 19 of the 2023 Advent of Code. For today's problem, we're in a workshop of some sort, and we have a bunch of machine parts that have a rating in each of four categories, X, M, A, and S. So, it's Christmas. And then each part is sent through a series of workflows that ultimately accept or reject it. Each workflow has a name and a list of rules. So in this example, the workflow is named EX. If the rating of the piece for category X is greater than 10, it sends it to workflow 1. If M is less than 20, then it sends it to workflow 2. If A is greater than 30, then it automatically rejects it. And as a default, if none of these pass, then the default action is to accept the part. If it's sent to another workflow, then it immediately goes to the start of that workflow and never returns, so we do not have to deal with loops, which is very good. If a part is accepted or rejected, then it's immediately uh, not processed any further. And so the problem is, given a list of workflows and a list of parts, we want to figure out which parts will pass. And so this is the worked example for each of these. Ultimately, we have three parts accepted, and then for each, we want to add up their rating numbers and then get the sum of the overall total. And so we want to know what is the sum of all of the rating numbers for all of the parts that get accepted. So our input format, we're going to say um, block one and block two are open zero dot read dot split on double new line. And now we want to, the workshops are the first block. So for each line in block one dot split lines, we're going to parse it as a workshop. So the first part is the name. So name and rest is line, we'll chop off the closing brace at the end, and then we'll split it on the open brace. And so this will give us name in this case is TJT and rest is this inner block here. So we can print that out to make sure that we're doing the right thing. We get the name and the rules. And so now we can say rules is rest dot split comma. And then we want to uh, store this workshop. So actually I'm going to make it a dictionary that points from each name to the list of rules. So we're going to say workshop name is equal to, uh, we'll give it a tuple. The first one will be the actual, um, the actual list of rules. And the second one will be the fallback. So we'll just call the fallback rules dot pop. So that will pop the last element off the rules which also helps us because the remaining rules need to be parsed differently, but this one will mess with our parsing. So the last rule gets sent to the second part of this pair, which is going to represent the fallback. And the first one is going to be the list of rules. And so then we can say for rule in rules, we'll store it as um, four components, the key, so the character that's being checked, the rating type, the comparison operator, the number, and the actual, the workflow that it's being sent to. And in this phase, we can treat reject and accept as individual workflows. We'll handle that later on in our logic. So we can say comparison and target equals rule dot split on the comma. And now for this part, comparison, the first character is going to be the key. The comparator is going to be the second character, and then n, the number we're comparing against, is going to be the remainder of the string. And so finally we can say workshops name zero, that gets us our first element, which is the list of rules, dot append key cmp n target. And so now if we print out all of our workshops, this is what we get. So the PX workshop has two rules and a fallback. The first rule says that if A is less than 2006, we go to QKQ. If M is greater than 2090, we accept. And as a fallback, we send it to workflow RFG. And then also a detail that I forgot to mention is that each part goes begins in the workflow named in. So now we need to process the items. So for line in block two dot split lines, these are each of our items. 
So that's what this looks like now. And we will have a total of something, which we will fill out later. Now we need to parse this into a usable format. The way we're going to store this is as a dictionary pointing from each of X, M, A, and S to the appropriate number. So we're going to say item is a empty dictionary. And now for segment in line dot, uh, we'll take the first and last characters off to chop off the curly brackets, and then we'll split it on commas. And now we can say um, character n equals segment dot split on the equal sign. And now item ch equals int n. And so now if we print out each of the items, we've basically just turned them into a dict pointing from each character to the number. So we can actually do um, logic on this. So now we want to determine if a part will be accepted or not. So we're going to implement a function for that. We're going to say def accept item and it'll return either true or false. And then, so let's just return true here. And now once we get here, we'll say if accept item, then we will add all of its part numbers together. So we'll do total plus equals the sum of the values of the dict. So that's all of these numbers. And so if we run it now, we just get the sum of all of the numbers in our original. So now for the logic, we're also going to make our accept function accept a key, which will be the uh, name of the workshop, basically. The name of the workflow, sorry. Have I been calling them the wrong thing this whole time? Yeah, I've been calling it workshop instead of workflow. Okay. And the key of the workflow let's call it name, will be in by default. And so we'll implement this recursively. We could do it iteratively too, but it's easy enough to do it this way. If the name is equal to R, so this is where we'll handle the logic for accepting and rejecting. If the name is R, we return false. And if the name is A, then we return true. So that handles the rejection and acceptance logic. And now we need to deal with the remainder of the rules. So now we'll say workflow Def uh, fallback equals workflows name. So workflow will be actually let's call it rules. Rules will be an array containing our tuple of key comparator n and target from above, and fallback will be this default value that showed up at the end of each workflows definition. So now we can iterate through the rules for key comparator n target in rules. We'll check if it satisfies this. Um, relation. And so we could do this one way, the way I did it on the contest because it's faster, although I'll show you a better way to do it, is if eval, and then I just took, um, I concatenated the value that I have, the comparator, and then n. So this, for example, would have, for the first example, we have x is 787 and in checks S1351, so sorry, S is 2876. So this would literally become uh, if eval, and then we get 2876 less than 1351. And so this would evaluate to false. Now using eval is a bad idea because malicious input could be used to run arbitrary code on your computer. But of course, in this case, it doesn't matter because we know what the input format will look like. An alternative way we can do this is by storing a dict from each comparator operator to a function that does what it's intended to. So we can say operators equals, and now the greater than will be int dot double underscore gt. So in Python, operators are implemented using so-called magic functions. So when we say two less than three, it's the same as saying two dot double underscore lt double underscore three. It's the same thing. And also, when you do x dot y and then call a function, it's the same as doing type of x. So for x, if x is a number, then we get either int or float. If x is a string, then we get the string class, which in Python is called str. It's type x dot y, and then we feed x in as the first argument. What this means is that 2 less than 3, or more generally a is less than b, 
is the same as a dot double underscore lt double underscore b, which is the same as type a dot double underscore lt double underscore b, uh, a b. And then since a is always an integer in our instance, it's just in dot double underscore lt a b. And so if we want an operator that performs the greater than comparison, we can just use this function directly. And now what we can do is we don't need to eval. We can just say if ops cmp, that gives us one of these two comparator functions. And then we need to feed it two numbers. The left side is the rating value for this key of the input item. And the right side is our comparison n. So if this is true, then we send it to the accept, uh, we return and then we recursively call it on target. So we take the item and we send it to our new workflow of target. At the end, if we've completed this for loop, that means that we never returned. And so it means that we need to go to the fallback. So we just return accept item fallback. And so that just gives us the solution for part one. So let's quickly recap it since it might be a bit complicated. This part is just input processing. We basically just need to format the input nicely for this logic. This is the core of it. We put the accept and reject default flows up here. And then down here for each workflow, we use this dictionary to help us do the comparison very quickly. Greater than is represented by GT in the Python magic function syntax and less than is LT. Um, by defining these methods on classes, this is how you can get custom operator uh, behavior in Python. And so we just check for each rule. If the rule matches, then we just send it to the target workflow. If it's a capital R or capital A, we'd send it to the workflow regardless, even though it's not a real workflow because it gets picked up here. And then finally we send it to the fallback, which again, will pick up any reject or accept here. Now part two is where things get interesting. We ignore the items that we already have. Instead, we want to know what are all of the, how many possible distinct combinations of Xmas ratings exist that will be accepted. So clearly this number is way too large to just loop through them and count because we'd have a total of like uh, 4,000 to the power of four, which is that many things that we'd have to loop through. Obviously impossible. And so we'll need to pick a more intelligent way of doing this. And so we're actually going to have to get rid of quite a bit of stuff. So we no longer need to go through each of the block two because block two no longer matters. We also no longer care about this function because it can only handle a single item at a time. And so it's completely useless now. What we are instead going to do is define a function that counts given a list of input ranges, the number out of that, those ranges that will be accepted. And so we can return zero for now, and then we can just print count, and then we'll feed it ranges. So we'll represent it as a dictionary, except this time the values instead of being integers will be a pair of integers representing the lower and upper bound. And we'll make it inclusive on both sides just to make things a bit easier. And so our range is key goes to one 4,000 for each key in Xmas. And so that will give us a dict pointing from x to 1, 4,000, and m, a, and s all to the same thing. Again, we'll do this recursively. So we'll also need a name uh, for the workflow that we're currently looking at, which will be in. So what this basically means is if we feed every single item that fits within these ranges into the workflow named by this, how many of them will be accepted? And so we start by feeding all possible combinations into the initial workflow. So workflow, if the name is R, then we return zero because all of them got rejected. If the name is A, then we need to return all of them. And so the number of possibilities is just the product of the number of possible X, M, A, and S values. So we can just say for low high in ranges.values product times equals high minus low plus one. We add plus one because it's inclusive on both ends. So we need to adjust for the one off. And then we can just return the product. If neither of these are true, then we need to look at the workflow itself. So again, rules fallback equals workflows of name. 
And now we loop through each of the rules. For key comparator and target in rules. Now, the way we're going to do this is obviously we can't check every single possible value. So what we're instead going to do is we're going to split our range into two pieces. We'll split it into the true half, the one that gets processed by this workflow, by this rule immediately, and the false half, which will be deferred to the next rule. So if the comparison is less than, then the true half will be everything starting from the bottom of our current range to just before n. So let me first define two values, low high equals ranges key. So key is one of x, m, a, or s. Ranges key contains two values, the lower and upper bound of the range of that value that we fed into count. And so low and high represent those values. So the true half starts at low and ends right before n because it's strictly less than. The false half starts at n because n is not less than itself and ends at a high. Otherwise, if the comparison is greater than, we the true half starts at n plus 1 and ends at high. And the false half starts at low and ends at n. Because again, it's non-inclusive because this is a strict uh, this will be a strictly greater than. And so now before we process, we have to optimize a bit because otherwise we would branch off too quickly and run out of memory. Sometimes one of these ranges will be empty. If the entire range that we input here is contained to one half of to one side of n, then one of these two ranges will be empty. So we don't want to process it. So we need to keep a running total because we'll be doing multiple recursions here. And at the end, we'll return it. And so we'll check the true half first. If the lower bound of the true half is less than the upper bound of the true half, or I suppose it should be less than or equal to because it's doubly inclusive, then we will need to pass it in recursively. So we'll say total plus equals count, and we'll need to feed, feed it another ranges object. We're going to avoid mutating ranges because it would cause issues, so we're going to copy it. This syntax allows us to copy a dictionary. Alternatively, I believe we can just call dict on it again, so a equals one, two, three, four, like that. Okay, so if we say b equals dict of a, then if we set a value in b to something else, it does not affect the original a. Let's go with that to avoid this weird syntax. So we make a copy of ranges, and then we modify the copy. So we will split our item ranges such that instead of the original low high values for the current key that we're inspecting, we'll feed it the truthy half, the true half of the range. So we'll give it t like this, and then we'll give it, and then we'll add the count of copy with target as the new workflow to the total. And then if the false side of the range is not empty, then we're going to update ranges itself. But we're not going to mutate it because that would pass the mutation upwards. So we're going to create a, we're going to set it to a copy of itself. And then because when we reassign an input parameter, it doesn't mutate the value that was passed in. It creates, it just changes what it points to. And then ranges key is equal to the false half. And so this needs to be passed into the next section of rules. And so we just skip. If the false half is empty, that means that this rule covered all of our remaining cases. And so we no longer need to proceed through the rest of the rules. So we can just break. Now, at the end of the for loop, if we broke, that means that we ran out of values to look at, and so there's nothing else to inspect. However, if we didn't break, then this else condition will trigger. In this case, it means that we still had some ranges left that were not covered by any of the rules, and so we need to defer to the fallback. And so we'll do total plus equals count ranges, which has been modified by this step before the for loop ended, and the target will be fallback. And so we run that. That now gives us the answer for part two. So to recap, we create a count function that accepts the four ranges for the Xmas values and tells us out of all of the possible combinations of rating values that fit within these ranges, how many of them will be accepted. 
given the workflow name, which starts initially as in. If we reject, we return zero, of course, and if we accept, we just multiply the number of possible values for each rating value. Otherwise, we loop through the rules, we chop the range that is currently being inspected by the rule into a true side and a false side. The true side, if present, is sent to the next workflow, and the false half, if present, is used to update the current range's value so that we can iterate onto the next rule. If we ever no longer have any false values that do not pass any of the rules so far, we can just stop iterating. And finally, if at the end of all of our normal rules, we still have something that didn't meet any of the requirements, then we send it to the fallback workflow. So that's all for today's video. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed.